for being here. God bless you. Praise God. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ shed his blood for us. Old stuff. Our responsibility tonight is bring it here tonight to realize the reality of what Jesus did for us. So we're not just having a gathering here. Thankful for everyone that's gathered here. But there's a world of sin out there. And there's some here that could receive a touch from the Lord because of the blood that He shed. But we've got to make it available today. In our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, we've got to reach out to Jesus. This isn't church, this is revival. Come on, we've got to turn up. We've got to shut down the doors, break down the barriers, and get into where Christ is. Hallelujah. The scripture says we can come boldly to the throne of grace. It's time to get up and make a charge from the throne today.
the hour. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's not, it's not special just on revival times. It's not special just for week, weekends. It's not special just for Sunday or Christmas Day or Easter. But from day to day, it's the blood that gives us power and strength from day to day to day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're blessed to have an opportunity to be with you today. Praise the Lord. Just remember anything great that happens here tonight is because Jesus is in your midst. And He's here because you come in His name. Not just me, but you came in His name. What's going on with mine? Probably. Testing one, two. What's really bad is when this happens in the nursing. Thank you, Lord. Uh, <laughs> it brings them alive. Hallelujah. Praise <laughs> God. Praise His name. I believe we're all right now. If it ain't, I'll take this off and just holler it off. Praise God. Hallelujah. The million scripture we're going to look at tonight in Romans chapter 12. Romans 12 and 2. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, uh, people sometimes think that Christians are laid back and easy going and calm folks. If that's what they think, there's been something wrong with us as Christians. Because we should be the biggest nonconformist people around. We should not fit in. We should not give in. We should not give up. Hallelujah. But we didn't list it to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. We're going to fight for it. We're going to pray for it. We're going to struggle for it. We're going to vote for it. We're going to campaign for it. We're going to pick it for it. We're going to do whatever we need to get the presence of the Lord known around us. Hallelujah. Praise God. I know that people think of us being peaceful folks, and we are. But I, we also have a Lord that did not come to bring peace. He come to set a sword. Yeah. I got that sword here. And I'm telling you, it will bring riots. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, it will. Praise God. I was watching it where a, a man was trying to pray a, a blessing over the service they were about to have. It was an outside service. And every time he said Jesus, they would get up and they were cursing him and throwing things at him. And they'd keep on praying. And they'd settle down and he'd pray a little longer and he'd use the name Jesus. Then he'd be up again throwing stuff and having fits. Well, I'm telling you, we're talking about in America, okay? We're not talking about someplace else. We're talking about in America where you and I live. Hallelujah. It's not time to sit down and do nothing. It's time to, to let the Holy Ghost lead us. Hallelujah. By His Spirit to know what we need to do to make a stand. And having done all to stand, to stand. I'll, I'll survive, sis. It'll be all right. Praise God. I bounce a lot. Well, I bounce down ladders off walls. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2 by now. And it says, And be not conformed to this world. Come on. Come on, man. Be not conformed to this world. Come on. If they don't know that you're not different than the world, then you have conformed. Come on. Yes, yes. Don't get excited. Come on. I talk about the way you dress. We could, but we're not going to. You've got to figure that out yourself. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because yeah. we're going to see how things should be done in the Scripture. Not to be conformed to the world. We have a responsibility to conform the way Jesus wants us to be in today's life. Well, that's what we need to conform to. Not yeah. the ways of the world. Yeah. Hallelujah. When I'm looking cool to the world, I think there's something definitely wrong with me. I don't want to conform to the world, but be ye transformed. There needs to be a change in our life that changes us from the way the world is to the way that Jesus is. That's what we're changing into. Hallelujah. Jesus told us, 
to, in, to enter into heaven, ye must be born again of the water and of the Spirit. Now if they want to, they just take some of that and throw it out. Come on. You don't hear them preach about water much anymore, sister, but the sister already said she's going to have to baptize them at the end of this. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I highly praise that and thank God. Hallelujah. That you are being introduced to water baptism because that is part of the Great Commission going into all the world and preaching the gospel to every preacher and baptizing them. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. That's part of it. Yeah. That's being a nonconformist. The world church is saying you don't need to do that anymore. Hallelujah. And you know, if you love Jesus, don't talk to me about need and must and have to. Talk about pleasing Him and Him love Him. So let's not talk about, well, I don't need to be baptized. Don't tell me I must be baptized. If you love Jesus, He says be baptized. If you love Him, you commit to be here and do what He tells us to do. However, every time you try to instruct people in the Word of God, they want to come against you because they don't want to do it. They want to conform to the world. Hallelujah. Where's your heart and your your desire at tonight? And if then the things of the world are the things of Christ. Hallelujah. The things of this world is going to pass away in a moment. In a moment it'll be gone. It's here now, but in a moment it'll be gone. Hallelujah. The Lord keeps sending reminders to planet Earth all the time that mankind is not in control. They can put up the sea walls. They can put up the levees. They can put up what they want. But when God sends the rain, there is no force on planet Earth that can stop the flood waters from coming down. Nothing can stop the mighty move of God. Hallelujah. No matter what man plans or what man builds, God can take it down. To remind us that He's still sovereign. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I sorry for all the loss that's been down here. Sorry for all the loss that's been happening here in Missouri while we've been gone. But I'm telling you, if it just brings one soul yes. to the understanding that hey, I'm not the big guy. I can't handle this. I need to get a hold of the strong man of the house. And that is Jesus Christ. We need to get a hold of Jesus and let him take care of this situation. My oh my. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you're not learning from these things, just you need to be listening up. How God works all things for our good. For them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Now, if you're not doing the purpose of God, but you're being conformed to the world, your desire to things of the world, to go out into the world and partake of the world, then maybe He won't help you out with that situation. Like He would desire to. God's mercy. He's long-suffering. And thank God for that. Gives us opportunity to get our heads straight. To be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Get a mind change. Yes. And that's a big problem that we have is the way we're thinking. Someone said that we got stinking thinking. Yes. Come on. Yes. And we sure do when we start thinking like the world thinks. I gotta have this. I gotta have that. Look at me. I'm just so ashamed that I ain't got this or that. Everybody around me's got that. No, I ain't got it. Oh my. I ain't got my iPad. Ain't got my Because you don't give them an iPhone. Yeah. You don't have an iPad. You don't have any electronics. You don't have Wi Fi. You don't have any internet. You don't have television. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm telling you, I'm old enough to live before all that. Uh, I'm telling you, we raised kids up without all that. Yeah. 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 Me personally, my kids had it. We was in. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I want to tell you, they'll, they'll, they'll tell you better. When they started arguing over that game, I threw it in the floor outside on the porch, and I stood up, up and down on it. I said, there you are. There'll be no arguing over this junk. Yeah. Hallelujah. If we can 
take it all right. But if we begin to act like fools for the world and desire the things of the world and start, instead of desiring brotherly kindness, brotherly love, and being kind to one another and helping one another, instead of just being concerned about get what ours. You want what's yours? It's a pit in the ground. That's what's yours. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But what we got, what we deserve, justice for everyone that is sitting in here is hell. Oh, I don't care if you've been a Christian for 150 years. I don't think anybody's quite that old here tonight. Hallelujah. Without the blood of Jesus right. Christ, it was ours to our death. Right. So anybody thinking they're going to make it in because they're a good person, because they treat people good, because they give money, because they help out in the community, because they go to the nursing home, because they've always been good to the kids, and, and they always take care of people around that, and don't do any good. We've got to have the blood of Jesus in our life. We've got to have, receive Him as Lord and Savior. Otherwise, we're not born again, and we will not enter in. You see, don't get, let it get complicated. Don't let them mess up your mind and try to twist it into something else. It's just that simple. It's Jesus Christ or hell. And that's just being rude, ain't it? No, that's being truthful. And sometimes the truth is rude because it's plain and simple. We're not... We're not painting over it, making it look pretty. That look how sweet it is to serve Jesus. It is sweet to serve Jesus. But I'm telling you, you'll have the same trouble serving Jesus that you have with the world. But Jesus will be there to help you through it. Hallelujah. People in the world get sick. People in Jesus get sick. People in the world have bad accidents. People that don't even know yet, Ella had an accident. Yeah. Hallelujah. But Jesus was there to see yeah. through yeah. that accident. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's the difference. Yeah. Praise God. Sometimes we get all upset because, oh, look at all this trouble I'm in. I thought Jesus was with me. Come on. Hallelujah. That's why the scripture says he's a very present help in trouble. Amen. If you just listen up, he'll be right there with you. Just ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He was right there with them. And then they was in deep stuff. Hallelujah. They was in that furnace and the fire was amazing. But before you know it, the one that said he would not leave him, would not forsake him, that Son of God was in the midst of the flame. Right there. Hallelujah. And he rise so quickly and so fastly that you didn't even smell like smoke when they come out. I mean, their garments were not singed or smoking. It was all just clean when they come out because it happened that quick. He's a very present hell in trouble. Hallelujah. He's there with you. Sometimes you got to go through the fire. But the promise is he'll be there with you. Sometimes you got to go through water. Some of you have done that. But his promise is he'll go there with you. Hallelujah. Sometimes, well, I might say more than sometimes, government don't treat you right. But Jesus treats you right. Hallelujah. He'll take care of it. He'll take care of it. If there's any slackness, Jesus will take care of it. In that situation. Weird, you're calling God. And doing what you're purpose to do. Yes. Hallelujah. Then he'll take care of you because he wants you and I to fulfill his purpose in us. What is his purpose? Why am I living for him? Because he gave us life. Hallelujah. And in return, he's going to give us life more abundant. Hallelujah. So you might think you got it good, but when you turn on Jesus in your life, you got it better. Amen. Trouble's still there, but you got it better because you got the one that'll go through with you. Amen. Your spouse may leave you, your children may laugh at you, community may just throw you away, but Jesus will always, always be there. You can do your drugs, you can do your alcohol, you can do your sex all over, whatever it is that, that pleases you to do. Jesus is going to, it's not afraid of any of that. He will be right there in the midst of all those things yes. that evil and sin yes. can do. It don't yes. see them all. It don't yes. turn them all. He's still there. I love you. I love you. Come on. Come to me. Come to me. I love you. Yes. Smile. 
oh my. Hallelujah. Oh my. That's why we don't want to be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind to think the way Jesus thinks. Hallelujah. And we won't be part of that group that is escorting people out of our church house because they're dressed inappropriate. Taking them out because they smell peculiar. Taking them out because they're, they're, they're the wrong race. Thank God for you. Hallelujah. And the rest. I always tell folks there's only one race. That's a human race. Right. That's the only one I've ever given that God created. If you've got a problem with that, you talk to God. Right. Hallelujah. He'll take care of you. Yeah, so <laughs> Praise God. You might find out when you start bleeding, you're bleeding red just like the rest of us. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. There you have it. <laughs> Praise God. Don't be conformed to the ways of the world. Hallelujah. Be transformed by renewing your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, this probably won't be too hard for you to think like the little things. First off, you've got to have what's yours. And you'll get it any way that you can. You're trying to do the way everybody telling you to do it. Get your education, go job hunt, get your job, start putting those money away and start building up the cash there so they can go out and get those things that everybody else got. But somehow or another, it just doesn't seem to, to happen as fast as you want, so you find another way, the world's way of did, and you go out and say, well, they're just leaving that way around. They must not want it. I think I'll go through my I always wanted that, so I'm just going to go by and pick that up and take it over to my place. And that's the way it starts, and it just keeps on going. That's the way the world thinks. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I can tell you a lot about criminal thinking. I was in the system for 26 years as a caseworker, and I sit over there, and they try to tell me things, and I tell them back what the truth was. Hallelujah. About the situation and the wrong way of thinking. My, oh, my. We need to get out of the world's way of thinking and start thinking godliness. Godly thoughts. Praise God. And it's not just about what ours, but it's about helping our brothers and Amen. sisters yes. with what is burning, what burnings are. Praise God. Not to be conformed. So if you don't fit in, you should go somewhere that maybe won't be too upset and just scream for a little while. Thank you, Jesus, that I don't fit in. Thank you, Lord, I don't fit in that crowd. I don't fit in that league. Hallelujah. I don't fit in that group there at school. I don't fit in that group at church that separates from everybody else. I don't fit in that place in the marketplace where, where nobody accepts me. I don't fit there, and I thank God for it. Start to thank God for it. Say, oh, woe is me. They don't love me. <laughs> Hallelujah. But yes, I heard it already from the children. They already know it. Yes, Jesus loves me. If I've got the love of Jesus, I've got a great start. Hallelujah. Not being conformed to this world to keep me in the love of Jesus. Now we want to begin to apply this stuff. How does this work? Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Hallelujah. 6 and 25. Matthew 6 25 says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? If we stop being so concerned about what we eat, I'll tell you, I've listened to the authorities on nutrition through the years. And I'll just take a case. Man, first it was good. Then it was bad, then it was good, then it was bad. See, I've been around, if you've been around long enough, it just goes through a cycle. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's bad. All the time, I'm eating eggs, though. 
It ain't really bothering me. I'm not conformed to the world. Hallelujah. I ate what was said before me as a child, and I'm still eating what's said before me if I get down. Hallelujah. The eggs just a good example of that. Praise the Lord. Whether they say it's good or bad in the future, if I can get an egg, I'll still be eating eggs. That's just one of the many things. Take no thought of what you shall eat. Hallelujah. My old boy, I tell you, I'm surrounded by eggs. So what am I going to eat? Eggs. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I never go hungry. My brother's got chickens and he don't want the eggs. So I eat the eggs. <laughs> Hallelujah. God has provided, see? God's provided. I'm away from there now. We'll be gone for maybe six weeks or so, whatever the Lord has in mind. But he's taking care of the chicken. They're going to be a stack of eggs when I get that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to have some good eating. Why? Because God is providing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Maybe somewhere in there I'll be praying, Lord, I'd like to have a little meat. <laughs> the children of Israel did that, so I might hold back on that prayer. It didn't turn out good for them. Just be thankful for what God has provided. Hallelujah. But I've taken things to, to homes where people are supposed to not have nothing, they're starving, and go in there and open the cabinet, and I look at beans in a can, beans in a can, beans in a can, yeah, beans, yeah. green beans, pinto beans, lima beans. Right. Oh, some of those things I'd rather have something else, but if I'm hungry, they'll be opened up and I'll be eating beans. And I love beans, don't get me wrong there. Hallelujah, I know it could get old, but don't tell me you're hungry if you've got beans in your pantry. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, let's see, I think I'm hitting the call mac and cheese. You might want some mac and cheese, so all right to ask for that. If all you got is beans, go ahead and ask for some mac and cheese if you want. Hallelujah, but don't be telling people you ain't got nothing to eat. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Yeah. My, oh my. Praise God. Oh, I heard a lot of voices in there. Amen. That's right. That's right. Yeah. What about that closet? Yeah. I ain't got nothing to wear. Oh. <laughs> Bless you, Lord. Yes. <laughs> Isn't our body more than random? Yeah. Hallelujah. I'll tell you. We've been blessed here lately. We've my wife has received some clothing that was never worn. A person passed, and they had duplicate that are close with still the tags still on it. They had never worn that clothing, but they would go ahead and buy some more clothing. They'd hang it back in there with tags back home, since you don't know what I'm talking about that back home. Her dear aunt, the godly woman, she, it's just impossible to say how many clothes she had in her closets that had never been worn. The store tag was still on it. Be concerned that she wouldn't have something to wear. She bought something, she locked it, get two or three of them. They don't wear out, so you still have it. That was the mindset. Concern now we need to remember why I'm going to this is because God's not happy with that because he said he would provide for us and we're so small faith that we don't think he can put clothes on our backs hallelujah that he can't put food in our, down our throats and clothes on our back hallelujah God said he would do that see when we begin to let God be God in our life and take care of these simple things in God's simple way then we'll have full of food. Now they got to stay home and protect it with a shotgun. Make sure nobody comes in and steal what was given to them. I'm trying to tell the truth here. Hallelujah. About a big step away the world thinks. Hallelujah. We don't need to get involved in that. Hallelujah. We need to let the Lord provide for us. Hallelujah. Follow the direction of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, it just occurred to me I'm going to have to tell this because my wife usually tells it and she tells it wrong. <laughs> How God provides. We didn't have nothing left. It was time that I was between jobs and there was nothing to put food on the table. And my wife was 
that's the pants handed down from the rag bag to rag bag to my mother-in-law and, and she doesn't do any seamstressing or sewing so she knew my wife did so she got this pair of pants from her from her mom and she was going to take them down to fit me she always says she's going to let them out I don't know about that. <laughs> However, anyhow, she was, he took that, he took the, the, the band off, the, where it was so good, yeah, he took the band off, and when she started pushing it together, it just seemed very good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. She felt something stiff in that band of that pants, so she ripped the seams out of there and pulled it out. And I'll tell you, well, this would have been back in the old, probably not in the early 80s. This happened. So it was a $50 bill. Come on, man. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, $50 keeps going for a couple of weeks and then some back there. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. It was so strange. It comes from the strange, strange place. We sit there and says, is it real? It looks real. It feels real. I've never seen one before. But it had all the right markings and pictures. I've seen about 50. I've felt this through the $50 bill before. Why, oh, well, yeah, I've earned more than $50, but it come with a check. And I put that in a bank. I didn't, didn't ever have $50 in my hand, but I did then. Hallelujah. God provides. We're so afraid of I said, I know what we'll do. We'll take you. Take you to the bank, get a cash. We'll get it broke down. They don't know if it's good or not. Well, they took it. They gave us some cash for it. Something I'm used to, tens and fives. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. When God provides it, that's just a simple way. In time and time, and you hear stories and stories and stories how God provides. Hallelujah. All right. He made provision for us. If we can get over our concern about for what we're going to eat, what we're going to wear, hallelujah, what our lifestyle is going to be, if we can get over that, let's just let God operate in our life. Hallelujah. Because he, he created us. He, he made us in our own individual way. As all our DNA is different, as we said here tonight, we're very much alike, but we're still different because God made us differently for different tasks to do in the body of Christ. And we're not when we're not doing what God's called us to do, what happens if my hand ain't working? Come on. It has an effect on the rest of my body, don't it? Is that why some of you folks been staying away from church? You want to hurt it? <laughs> Hallelujah. It is hurting us. People that aren't faithful does hurt the body of Christ. Because it gets to that place that provision isn't being taken care of that God's called to do. But I'm supposed to preach in my feet, so I'll get back in here. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for the body, what ye shall put on. Don't think about it. Don't take any thought about that. Now, if we're going to be conformed in our mind to the right thinking, one thing we don't think about is food and clothes and drink. God said He will provide it. Hallelujah. I'm not telling you not to go shopping. You understand? But don't concern yourself about it. Get what you can. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. My pork's got a little more fat on it than the lean pork there because it, because it costs a whole lot less. My pork would be fat pork. And I'll be a fat porker. <laughs> but I can just do what God provides. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Why do I use humor? This is serious stuff, and sometimes you gotta ease ease up the tension, all right? Because I just got in your food pantry and bothered you. <laughs> and as I got in your food pantry, I went in your clothes closet. All bothered you there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the Lord wants us tells us not to worry about that stuff. Hallelujah. Praise God, it's a crazy, you know it's really hard on evangelists. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I got, if I'm going to a new church, I got to pull, our, our church ain't been for a while. Both of them happened that way. I got to pull in the park, sit in the parking lot and look at the people as they're going, well, they'll wear the coat and tie, they'll take the coat and tie on. What, what am I supposed to wear when I go in here? 
Used to, you have to have a coat and tie, so I have a coat and tie I can go in with. But now, you get condemned for wearing a coat and tie. Yeah. You go be condemned for wearing a coat and tie. You get told real quick, we don't do that around here. We're not a bunch of stiff shirts. You can take that off. All right. I'm not. You know, I want to take it off. It's, it's just fine. I don't mind wearing it. I don't mind taking it off. You just tell me what you want. You want me to hop on the left leg or you want me to hop on the right leg? Hallelujah. I'll do what it needs. If it's not for me as a friend, you know, I'll do whatever it takes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's just raining. It's just raining. Hallelujah. They start talking sometimes. They want to really get down on and say, how much you pay for that? You know how much that cost you? No, it was given to me. Come on, man. God provided. So you want me to take off what God has provided for me and given to me? What is wrong with you? No, I don't want that. I'm trying to preach the gospel to them. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I'm trying to preach it to you all too. We're going someplace. Maybe not too fast, but we're getting there. Well, we've just been to the past in the closet. Look at we go now. Hallelujah. Praise God. My oh my. We need to just go on, I reckon. Is not life more than me and the body more than rain? Isn't it? Hallelujah. I don't know what the pastor had on. I thought she was dressed in. When Lily Allen needed to get to the hospital. I don't know what she was dressed in. She might not remember. Because <laughs> it don't matter. There's times it just flat don't matter. You don't have to be all dressed. I go to the hospital. But they got dress up nice. Hallelujah. He had a hospital visit. He calls us and he's been, his heart's bothered. He's already taken three nitro and the pain's not going away. And he's had this pain for four hours. He's called us and I think I might need to go to the hospital. Well, I think you should go to the hospital too. So we rode up to get, get out there and, and he, he was hurting and in severe pain, but he just all, still went ahead and got all dressed. You want to make sure he was best fit to be seen in the hospital. What happened when he got to the hospital? They stripped him out. You're not going to have to the hospital. Hallelujah. They're going to work on you. Hallelujah. We sometimes get concerned about things that ain't even important. Hallelujah. Praise God. I know a man that stood up. Preacher that stood up and drew out his chest. I'm so proud of my pastor. Because they brought a, a child up, asked him to be baptized. He said at the baptizing when they brought the child in, they, he showed up in shorts. So the pastor refused to baptize him. Well, since I'm in rough today, he can go to hell with the rest of the sinners. Come on. So that was sin. That was sin. Plain and simple. Hallelujah. My oh my. If it's just me and somebody else, if it's a man, I don't care. I'll put you down naked. I don't care. But I'm putting you down. I'm not going to take responsibility not baptize. Sister, that's how much important I've been baptized. I don't care how you dress. You come to be and say you believe in Jesus Christ. You repent of your sins. You can be dressed in a cup of tea. Someone 
somewhere between there, there's a mess. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. But God blessed and He built the wall. Yeah. Hallelujah. We may look a little messy. We may be beaten down here in the, the mm -hmm. firecracker stand. Hallelujah. But I love it anyhow. Praise the Lord. I thank God. Was anybody here for the June Bug Revival? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you, this is sweet compared to that. Hallelujah. This is sweet. Hallelujah. But y'all stuck it out. Amen. Praise God. You can put some bugs home with you. That was really nice. Praise God. Hallelujah. Life is more than meat, the body, than raiment. Hallelujah. Then. If there's a more important thing than, than what we wear, than what we eat. I'm not saying those ain't important. If those things, let's get it straight, those things are so important that God is going to see that you've got something to eat and yeah. something to wear. Yeah. He's not going to just leave it up to you. He's going to see that you have it. It is important Amen. stuff. And He's going to see that you have what you have need of. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. What he will it knows you have need of, not what you think you need. Oh, amen. My, oh, my. Hallelujah. Oh, go on, Harry. You get in trouble already. Let's drop on down to verse 30, Matthew 6 and 30. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall it not much more clothe you? O oh, ye of little faith. No. Oh my. I remember going to elementary school and all the clothes the, the clothes I wore was made by my mother. They didn't come from the store. The material came from the store, but she made the clothes. And I got made fun of. But you know, just six or seven years later, everybody wanted those homemade clothes, but you couldn't find and nobody else wore them. I was wearing them. I was special. But I was I felt bad about it. They made me feel bad about it. However, when God gives you something, there's no any reason to feel bad about it. If it's different than everybody else's, so let it be. God has provided you treasure. Joseph's coat of any colors. Nobody yes, else had one like that. His brothers was all upset and made fun of him, ridiculed him, and rolled him because it, he thought he was something, because he had a coat of many colors in there and had made for him. Hallelujah. But God used that. <laughs> Hallelujah. God provides. Let's not make fun of what God provides. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I felt real bad yesterday. Hallelujah. I got fed breakfast. Got fed lunch. And somebody called me up and wouldn't give me dinner. And I said, I can't stand no more. <laughs> can't stand no more. I said, what? If you, uh, please, buy me some dessert. But I can't have the whole bill. Well, man, I wait until 7 o'clock for that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It was good. Good to have an offer. Sometimes God provides too much. Hallelujah. But we thank God for the provision. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. So don't hold back. I'll eat it eventually, okay? <laughs> Praise God. Because if you're making provision by the hand of the Lord, or be it for me to reject it. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless us. So God closed the building of the fields and, you know, I put this down here, and tomorrow is cast into the oven. Shall he not much more clothe ye, O ye of little faith? Yeah. Hallelujah. I wonder what God feels like when we go to the closet and we say, I have nothing to wear, but there's no room in the end for the closet. <laughs> God says He'll provide for us, and we open up the closet and said, I don't have nothing to wear. Now, come on, guys, don't tell me that you look in there and say, Well, I don't have no jeans that I want to wear. I don't have my, don't have my polo shirt or, my, or whatever other shirt I want to have in there. Oh, you got one on. I bless you. Thank you, brother. I'm glad you found that tonight. Hallelujah. 
I'm not, I'm really not, I'm talking about the attitude. I'm not talking about the clothes themselves. Talking, so that's where I'm at, the attitude we get. And we haven't got nothing to wear. Praise God. My wife always wants me to wear jeans when I'm out. And when I go out to wear jeans, I, I work in them. I come back, they're all stayed up. She oh, you wrote your new jeans. I said, the jeans, you're supposed to work in it. That's the way I was raised. That's what jeans were for, to work in. They work, to, they work for, for dress. They work to, to go out style wear or whatever else you might want to call it. I don't know what you're supposed to do with them. I work in them. You do what you want, but I'll tell you, I do once in a while go on that shit. Man, I want to go town, but I don't want to look like a hobo. I can't find me, can't find me any, any jeans in here that's not all stained up. I got one pair, one and a half pair. I say a half pair because just holding one leg is stained up. As long as I just walk with the one side, so I'll be all right. Praise the Lord. So you got to make sure which checkout counter you go to is you get the right size. All right, come on now. Hallelujah. I'm saying that I'm just, I'm like you too. I, I like to wear certain things. And right now, if it fits, it's great. Hallelujah. Praise God. But God has provided for us. And when we, when we don't appreciate what is there, we're basically, we're telling God, I tell you, if we went to our mamas, when we was little, we went been back to mamas, and mama, I ain't got nothing to wear. Dad, here comes the strap. I learned early, early on you didn't tell all the dads some things. One of those things is you never did tell them that I'm bored. Boy, this is a lot of work to do when you tell them you're bored. I didn't know there's so much many things to do. But I learned how to do some things when I got bored. <laughs> but I learned pretty quick not to be bored. At least I tell nobody. Hallelujah. Come on now. Jesus is providing for us and we need to appreciate His provision. Hallelujah. Look what God's provided up there. And, and y'all meeting down here in Park Ridge. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you. You'll be in there in just the best of conditions. And you'll be looking down here at the Park Ridge. Hallelujah. Praise yes, God. I know I pastored church. Praise the Lord. I always had an outside deal. But I liked it outside. I like to hear everybody in the neighborhood hear me scream. I wanted to know about Jesus. And, what, and if you get outside, some of them will come down and move around. So I enjoyed it. So there's a Why are we leaving there? You used to do it. Why are we leaving there? Bad years. I didn't ask you to leave. I'm going out here to have church. You want to hear me? Come on now. <laughs> Hallelujah, because that's where God sends me out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Did you get to go again once in a while? Maybe. That's up to the pastor. <laughs> I might be meddling again. All right, let's go on here. <sighs> For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. There we are, right there. Come on. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Hallelujah. It's all right to remind them in course in the appropriate way. But God already knows. We're we'll dropping on down to verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Do you do that? If you don't, that's your problem. I know because it was my problem. I had some needs. I had some things that were honest needs. They were things that needed to, needed to be sent to me. I need to receive them. So I'm telling the Lord, I need this and I need that and I need the other thing. And nothing happened. It went on for a while. Nothing happened. And finally, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Come to my mind. Hallelujah. I believe the Holy Ghost put it there. So I begin to seek the kingdom of heaven. I begin to seek for righteousness. I begin to seek for a better way to live. I begin to seek for a way to reach my neighbor, to reach people, pulling them out of sin. I begin to seek for the important things. For God already said that He provided these things for me. I just need to get where in Him so I can receive. He's already made provision. We just need to get in His stream so we can receive those things. Hallelujah. He has provided for us. 
Hallelujah. If first we seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I got to go to work and do jobs to get all the overtime I can get so I can buy my kids a new game set. But they really been wanting it. I know, I'm sorry, Pastor. I'm going to be missing church for a while. But you know, Christmas is coming. Got to get gifts for all the kids. Got to pay out all this money so I can seek it in all the overtime I can get. Uh, is that seeking righteousness? Is that seeking the kingdom of God? Come on. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, man. Yeah, we all want to act like we can give anything they want, but. We can't do it, but God hasn't provided it that way. God doesn't expect us to do it that way. There's no reason to let the world tell you you have to do that either. But we do. Many people max out credit card after credit card and found themselves in the bondage of debt just so they can be Santa Claus. Lord, help us. The enemy drags us into his ways so we can provide for ungrateful children that will just destroy the toys as soon as they receive them. And we will. I guess I'm going to read to everybody. A reality check. That's what we're talking about tonight. Be not conformed. Hallelujah. There's nothing wrong with giving gifts. Uh, nothing wrong with it at all. You've got it to give, give. Praise the Lord. But no use putting chains on your feet, chains on your hands, and telling Jesus, I can't make it to church today because I'm going to pay for this gift. Oh, it was fun. I bought them all. And now the kids have them. They've had the fun. And they might even be very appreciative children, and they're good. But if you. Tell them, now daddy has to work 20 hours a day and mama's got to get a job too to pay for your gifts. The children are going to say, I want mama and daddy at home. Yeah, come on. Hallelujah. God has provided a way. Mom and dad's, I know, my, my wife and I worked for years. That's been those things too. But I'm telling you, we need to be home because you brought those children in the world and you need to take care of them. You need to be the one to raise them. I just... That just irks me to think somebody else will raise my kids. No. <laughs> I hope not. I, I the best. I wasn't the best parent. Still ain't the best parent. But I'm telling you, I, I tried to do my best. Praise the Lord. And I'm glad that I had an opportunity. Amen. All right. Now I need to do this. Thank you. I knew I had some backup for that. <laughs> oh, how are you? Now, 2 Corinthians 3 and 17 says, Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now how does that fit in? Well, when we refuse to be bound and conformed to the way the world wants us to be, then we can shout if we want to. We can skip around the church if we want to. The night room, we can run, we can scream, we can holler, we can try to sing, or we can say we've got liberty to do all those things if we so desire to do that. We're not bound by have to keep that working going on so that we can get all those things that the world demanded that we do. My, oh my, hallelujah. What is God? I'll just tell you an easy thing. Well, maybe I'm sharing too many stories, but I'll tell you. This is where, um, the Christ's birth came around, Christmas time. He was always asking, Well, you got your tree up yet? He said, I don't put up a tree. You don't celebrate Christmas? I didn't say nothing like that. <laughs> well, you don't have a Christmas tree. You think I can't celebrate Christmas without a tree? I'm not even quoting. I'm quote to you from Jeremiah what he said about it. Okay? Hallelujah. I can celebrate the birth of Christ without a Christmas tree. I don't think it was born in a manger. I don't think it was there when Christ was born. Now, you celebrate with a Christmas tree all you want. I do not hold that against you. But I'll just, I do hold it against you if you think you don't have a Christmas if you don't have a tree. Come on, man. Praise God. 
You, if you can even celebrate the birth of Christ, if you don't have a gift to give or no gifts to receive, you can still celebrate the birth of Christ. Hallelujah. After all, let's do it right. It's His birthday. Let's give Him give the gift that He wants from us. What does He want from us? He wants us. Hallelujah. He wants us to worship Him. He wants us to celebrate Him. It's His birthday. Praise God. What in the world would happen? One of these children have a birthday and we set them down at the table and sing happy birthday to them and then they just sit there and we start changing gifts to each other. Come on. What's going to happen? Woo! I've heard some screaming and hollering now, kids. I think we might hear some of that. Their birthday and everybody else getting the gifts. Come on. Well, just how many people don't even show up for church because it's Christmas? Yeah. Oh, I, I want not to be with my family. Well, this is celebrating. You're not celebrating Christmas there. You go out and whatever you're celebrating it has to be some pagan holiday because you're doing without Jesus. You want to celebrate a holiday with Jesus, you do it with Jesus. I don't care what you call it. Now I'm never going to get into holidays. Go hit the truck up. <laughs> Praise God. God has got to get out of town. I'm trying to tell you the truth. Why am I telling you these things? Not because sin, 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 but because you're being conformed to the world and all that conforming to the ways of the world is dragging your spirit down. It's keeping you from praising God. It's still in our liberty yes, to worship the way we can yes, because we feel like losers because we're, we might be making in $75,000 a year salary, but we're keeping the kids up in style and mama up in style and going to better schools because we surely can't send them to public school, so we got to put them in the private school and have tutors because you know all the bullies at the public school. They don't have bullies in the other school. Thank you for the baloney. Praise God, got some heat now. Glory. Hallelujah. But let's get real, folks. Praise God. How much do we need? Do we need all these stuff? Are we, are we holding ourselves back but doing the things of the world, conforming to the world? We need to examine our lives so that we can turn loose and serve God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And a pastor just recently asked me, are you full time now? I, it wasn't good enough just to say yes. I had to tell him, I've been full time for Jesus Christ for 42 years. I've only retired for, for seven. I've only been retired seven years, but I was full time for Jesus all the other time. I did the first thing in the morning with Jesus, the first thing in the afternoon with Jesus, the first thing in the evening with Jesus. Hallelujah, opened the church. But my wife was in the hospital, just had our second son. Go visit her a little while, go to the opening of the church. I didn't say, I can't come to church for my wife in the hospital with her new baby. She still loves me. You think you think it was right or wrong. I'm just saying that we've got to have some importance. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. I was there to see the Lord. What more you want? Hallelujah. I tell you, I was there. But we also had God. That's what I'm saying. We've got to quit thinking, look, if I do this, I can't do Jesus. Lie on lie. We've got so many different compartments in our life. Well, I'm married, so I got the spouse. I have children, so I got this kid and this kid and this kid. But just, you know, each child, they're not all the same. They're a little different, so we've got to treat them a little different in some ways because some might be timid, one might be bold. And, and you got to work with them different, so you put them in a little box in your mind that when I'm working with them, I treat them this way and that way. All you're feeling the same old stuff, you know, right there. But I mean, the way you interact with them, and you just go on to everything, the type of entertainment you do, the type of recreation you do, ways come. I'm going to tell you, Mr. Weir in here, God conformist, he took several vacations while he was on the job, and over... We had vacations. The greatest time that my one of the greatest times, as little ones that my two boys had, was when we stayed at Sister Lorena's trailer. She moved out in her 
her a pantry trail and her brother Charles moved out there and we had the run of her home. But that wasn't enough, she told it, our two sons that everywhere in the house there's some candy here. <laughs> Well, they had fun while we was there. We had fun at church. We learned more about Jesus and the, and the, and the, and the ministers' meetings that we was going to. And that's the way most of our vacations were spent, going to a minister's meeting, going to Holy Revival. If there was something, uh, a carnival or something on the way, we try to get into the carnival, try to get into those things. But Jesus came first. You can call me wrong, but I call me right because Jesus has to be first in my life because I have no power and authority over myself. I lose control. It's got to be Jesus in my life. Hallelujah. You decide how you're going to put Jesus first. Praise God. There's people that put Jesus all there on Sunday morning. But any other time of the week, you can't tell us anything about Jesus about Him. But we need to be Jesus Monday through Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Hallelujah. When people are looking sour at us on Monday, we need to find the joy of the Lord because we need to have some joy that the Lord is providing for us. Oh yeah, we're having to work, but the Lord has provided for us. Hallelujah. And praise God, thank God. You know, when you look at you, where you're going, when you go into the market, some folks don't like to go to the market. Hallelujah. But when you go into the market for a missionary field, it's a whole different picture. Praise God. When you go into the job, some folks don't like the particular job at. I worked in prison. It wasn't. You know, it just wasn't too all great. But I found it a missionary field. Praise God. Hallelujah. My oh my. Witness to inmates, witness to staff, talk yes. to everybody about it. I'm telling you, it was a great time. Look far as going to prison. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Praise the Lord. Hear that those old gates clicked up behind you and bite when you go and you don't have any keys so you can't get out. Come on. <laughs> so you're locked in there with the rest of them. But you're supposed to be being paid for. So you go in there and enjoy it and talk with them and you know, you do what you call and have to do. We just need to take God in all these different compartments. Yes. If you've got to look at something differently, you need to look at it through God's eyes. Yes. Your spouses, you need to realize it's not you and your spouse, but it's you and Jesus and your spouse. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. He needs to be there. If you haven't seen Him in the midst of, you, of the two of you, then you are missing out on one of the greatest blessings that God has brought when He enjoyed Adam and Eve together to be one. We're missing out on the greatest greatest thing we can have. Praise the Lord. Those were the first two that Jesus was in the midst of. How did all of us have that opportunity for Jesus to be in the midst of us if we can get two agreeing on one thing? Hallelujah. We need to put Jesus in these things. That's when you're not conforming to the world. Hallelujah. Praise God. You see, I won't have to ever, ever tell anybody 